Let's talk about what's new in Robopack. Firstly, we're on the what's new in Robopack screen here. And August 2025, that's now, for a couple more days, PowerShell App Deploy Toolkit version 4.1 script support. Excellent news. A lot of people have been asking for that for weeks since version 4 was released. Version 4.1 has some pretty big changes to it. I did a few videos on my channel about what 4.1.0 was all about and then 4.1.1 I think because we saw the removal of uh, the service UI requirement for being able to interact with the end user in their session from the system session in Intune. So huge amount of change there. And fundamentally we at Robopack we use PSADT for every app we package. All the custom ones that you upload and the app library ones that we use are all wrapped in PSADT until very recently, two days ago. We supported only version 3. Um, and it took a little while, a couple of months maybe, to get to supporting version 4, and it's done now. It, it works, and I want to show you how that, how you can get started with that. I've written a blog post already, so I'll link that in the description. But crucially, it's really easy to get started. Although there, there is a slight thing to be aware of. I'll highlight it just there. If you have used commands that are specifically related to the features in version three, and you're applying, you're converting this to a version four app, they might not work. <laughs> they they aren't going to just magically convert if you've typed them in manually and they're using features that are no longer there in version 4, that might not work. So just be aware of that, and you may want to just use version 3 for those particular applications, and then when you're ready to convert the settings or whatever you're, whatever you're doing, that is version 3, to version 4, then that's ready to migrate over to version 4 as well. Um, we can really quickly get started by going to settings, and then script templates, and you can see the default is still version 3.10.2. It's the default in my environment, it's the default in yours to start with unless you change it. So I'm going to go to add a new template and you'll see the version in this demo environment, it's 3.10.2 test, but the version will be this for you most likely unless you've changed it. And we can change it to the new version which is version 4.1.3 which actually was only released a couple of days ago as well, so a really quick turnaround from the devs on that um, particular one, but we were really close to releasing version 4.1.1 um, just the, the moment before they released 4.1.3, so we just swapped it out and, and tested it and it seems to be good. There was a few fixes in that, it seems. So we're going to just change this here, because this string is obviously not updating by itself, it's the name, so why would it? And this is our uh, template that I'm going to build for me. Now, I can remove desktop shortcuts, which is interesting, so I can choose that. That's also in version 3, so that's not a big deal. What I found out today, though, is how Robopack figures out if there are, if there are shortcuts in there. Because obviously it's installing all the apps on, it, on the VMs, it can detect which shortcuts exist and specifically remove those. Like, dive in and figure out which applications are pushing shortcuts to the desktop and then specifically target those shortcuts. I think that's really clever and cool. I didn't realize it was doing that. Um, anyway, we can also not include the PSADT module, and that's a bit weird. That's only version 4 that supports that because it's now now based on a module. And that you might want to do that if you are um, pushing the module as a, as a thing to all computers anyway, so it doesn't need to go down with every application you're pushing. And there are specific reasons you might want to do that. And the, I spoke to one of the devs, um, one of the people really involved with PSADT, who was kind of masterminded this version four uh, changes. It was uh, Mitch. Thank you for for your time. Um, you would you might want to do that if you are using the module for other stuff other than just application packages that you're pushing down. So if you're using um, remediation scripts, for example, that are using some of the cool features in the modules, you can do that now. Obviously, then you can just do that directly without having to push the module down. So you can now suddenly use scripts much more easier. Uh, more easier? That's not, how you, that's not how you speak. Much more easily. Um, anyway, so you can not include the module. 
Uh, disable client installer log files if you want to. You can change the directory and stuff. This is all standard stuff. We obviously need to enable it if you want to use it. But then we get to the other options. Dialog options here. Company name. This is a new field for version 4, I think. Let me just double check. It is not a new field <laughs> for version 4. Uh, I just didn't look at it. So you can type the company name. Um, welcome dialog again is uh, it's actually is in, is in both but when you choose it you can specify that you might only want to show it if there are apps that need to be closed and also allow deferral perhaps same concepts work here except with version 4 it's no longer going to include the service UI stuff and that hack to get interacting with the end user directly uh, by manipulating tokens and stuff it's going to just use the features of version 4 that make that happen so we'll be able to show that interface to the end user directly without reducing the security of the sessions so that's good isn't it uh, we'll leave that though i can show the open dialog doesn't really matter um we can stop it from showing on top of other windows i guess the other thing is that the welcome dialog has slightly changed in that it's no longer going to be right in the center of the screen and use a kind of old looking interface it'll It'll be a more modern, um, a more modern pop-up for end users, but still the same contents will be in it almost. Progress dialog, install complete dialog, exactly the same, and this is changed, right? Because this is a two five six pixel by two five six pixel icon that we have space for in this new interface. Whereas in the old version, it was a banner of four fifty by seventy five. I'm not going to bother trying to work out if you've got more space to work with with this icon, but um, the point is, it's different. It is it is going to be showing to the left of the words rather than a top on top of the words, and uh, yes, so a few changes there. When I choose save, this is now going to be by default. So I can uh, I'll find it because I didn't make it default. Did I? I'll scroll down to it. There it is. Today, seventeen thirteen, a few minutes ago. I'll choose edit. I'm going to make it default for me. And there we go. Now it is default and it's enabled. Fantastic. So that's now my um, default script that I can use. So when I start pushing applications, so for example, if I go into the instant apps library and find Greenshot and analyze and build, it will be analyzing and building with uh, and wrapping it as version 4.1.3. Again, not a lot changed with Robopack day to day. Now, when you start using this, you won't have to do things differently to how you did before. But what we do have instead is the fact that it's going to be using that new version of PSADT rather than 3.10.2. So also, yeah, let me just get out of this so I can quickly show you the next thing that's important, is that when you're adding a custom setting, for example, let me go into the custom settings on this. And there it is. I can scroll down and we've got all these, you know, the standard customizations you can make with custom settings. That's fine. But when I scroll down, we always had this ability to do script commands. Now, if I add a script command here, we can do a script command, for example, in the pre-install section. And there it is. I can type whatever script command I need here from, uh, you know, the, the list of um, the commands that PSEDT supports. But you can now specify whether you're talking about a PSEDT script, PSEDT version 3 script, or a PSEDT version 4 script. Very important to be able to specify that if you need to. Maybe not all the time, but certainly sometimes. Okay, that was all I really wanted to share. That's pretty important um, because the changes are there. We now support version uh, PSEDT version 4.1.3. Huge congratulations to the team behind PSEDT. It, it's a huge amount of difference you would have seen from my other videos that I'll link up at the top there the amount of change that you get and the new features that you get with version um, 4.1 and above All right that's it from me see you next time